this algorithm lesson, we're going to discuss the insertion sort algorithm. The insertion sort is one of the most basic sorting algorithms out there, and it's nice because it's incredibly easy to understand. It's also pretty easy to implement when it comes to sorting algorithms. Uh, it does have some weaknesses if you have a data set you're trying to sort that is a, has a lot of integers or a lot of different items, then insertion sort is definitely not the best one to go with. However, if you're looking to sort a smaller number of items, it works very well. It's also great for if you're just trying to get to learn sorting an algorithm. So we're going to start with this array, and it has six elements, 5, 47, 12, 100, 33, and 21. And so what we're going to do is go through each one and I'm going to show you the stages of what it takes to sort this using the insertion sort algorithm. So what you do is you start off on the left hand side and so we're going to look at the integer 5 and what the first step is comparing 5 and 47. We see that 5 and 47 are already in sorted order so that's good. We, that means that we don't have to do anything with these. So our the first set of the iteration actually remains the same. Then we go on to the third item, which is 12. We, we do a comparison and we say is 47 less than or equal to 12, or you can say is 12 less than or greater than 47. And we know 12 is less than, and so what we're gonna do is take 12 and move it right here. So the next version of the sort would equal 5, 12, 47, 100, 33, and 21. So we now are sorted for the first three items. Next thing we do is we look at the fourth item and we compare it to 47. We realize that 100 is greater than 47 and so we don't have to do anything at all. So the first four items are sorted. Next, we look at 33. And we see, is 33 less than 100? We know it is, so we say, okay, well, is 33 less than 47? Yes, it is. So we know 33 has to go here. There's actually, uh, one other step in here I shouldn't let go. Uh, we actually have to compare 33 to 12, so that would be the real step. Uh, you know, just using common sense, you can see where it would go, but in the real life algorithm, it what you would do is you'd take 33, compare it with each item to the left, and until it was greater than one of the items, then you would just keep on moving. So the next version would be 5, 12, 33, 47 and 100. And for the last ver and then 21. For the last version, we know we have 5, 12, 33, 47 and 100 are all sorted. So for the last one, we take 21 and we compare it to 100. We know it's less than 100. We compare it to 47. We know it's less than 47. We compare it to 33. It's still less than 33. We compare it to 12. We see it's more than 12, so we know it goes right here. And so for the last iteration, we know it's 5, 12, 21, 33, 47, and 100. And so there you go. You have a fully sorted list. Now when you're dealing with six items, this is an absolutely fantastic algorithm to use. Uh, when you get to you know larger items, you know over a thousand items or you know anything like that, then this isn't going to be really good. This is essentially a brute force type algorithm, and so you're looking at every element and then uh, you're moving that element based on its value. We're going to get into some other algorithms such as merge sort and quick sort, which are a lot more intelligent. Uh, 
they have some pretty powerful mechanisms that make them perform much better and operate much faster, uh, exponentially faster actually. And so if you want to know the time complexity, which if you're taking this for an algorithm class or something like that, then you definitely want to know the time complexity. Uh, this actually has three different complexities. We have our best case, we have our average, and we have our worst. It's really good to know all three because uh, with uh, all three you're going to get different values. Best case is actually going to be order of n. Average and worst are going to be the same. They're going to be order of n squared and order of n squared. Now if you watched my uh, video talking about growth of functions, you know that anything on this side of the world is really a, uh, for especially for sorting, is not a great way to go because these numbers get very fast very quickly and you'll end up having some very slow, uh, poor performing type of program. So we would want to stay away from this for large items. However, the interesting thing is this best case. This best case is actually better than some of the most powerful algorithms out there. Uh, some things that are used for just gigantic applications. This little insertion sort algorithm actually works better than those in certain cases. And if you want to know that case, uh, it's actually important to think about because if you really understand the algorithm, it'll make perfect sense. Uh, if you notice how many times we had to iterate here, we had to create a new list each time we went through, but we only had to do that when the item, the next item down the list was less than the item to the left. When that wasn't the case, we're able just to move right onto the next item. So take for an example, five to 47, we saw that five was already less than 47. We didn't have to do anything. We just continued right onto 12. Now imagine if our list started out as 5, 12, 21, 33, 47, and 100. In other words, if we got a list that was already sorted, it was already in sorted order, that's when we would get this best case. And order of n just means that the speed or the time complexity all it takes is the amount of time it takes to get through the total number of items in the list. And so that's incredibly fast. The, uh, some of the other fast algorithms typically have a time complexity of n log n, which has a speed that is actually uh, right, right in this area in between uh, these two type of uh, complexities. And the reason for this is because uh, insertion sort is so basic, it doesn't have a lot of different things. Like it doesn't um, have a lot of big mathematical functions. It doesn't do divide and conquer. It's actually pretty uh, basic in how you implement it. And so if you have a list of items that you know is either in order or it's very close to being in order. A great example I've heard is uh, say that you are making a banking application and 90 plus percent of the items that you're getting for check numbers, uh, for the most part, those are going to be either in order as your application receives them or it's going to be very close to being in order. Insertion sort would actually be a pretty good algorithm for that because when it takes items that are in order, even a large number of them, it does very well with that because it only has to uh, do its more time-consuming uh, kind of functions when it's having, uh, you know, it's, when it's actually moving the items in the array. And so for best case, uh, you can get to this if you 
know that you're dealing with data that is very close to being sorted and you just kind of want to uh, polish up the, uh, the array to make sure it's in perfect sorted order. That's when you can use that, or if you're dealing with a very uh, small number of items. Worst case, right over here, the very worst case you could ever get on this was if the items were in reverse sorted order. And if you want to know the reason for that, uh, let me just give us a little bit of uh, room up here. Let me just clean this up. Uh, the reason for that is because if you're trying to get these all in the correct sorted order, like, and I'll keep that right here, you look at each item and you compare it with the item on the left. Now what would happen if we had this in reverse sorted order? 3, 21, 12, and 5. We would literally have to create a new line for every single version. So we would have to create one that was 47, 100, 33. 21, 12, and 5. And then the next one, we would have to do the exact same thing over and over and over and over again. And uh, so you would have to go through the entire list uh, and you'd have to iterate through every item where you're essentially taking this 100, moving it through each item till it's at the end. Then you'd take the 47, you'd, do, you'd be doing the exact same process. So when, if you have something in reverse sorted order in, or something in that side of the world, insertion sort is an absolutely horrible algorithm to you. So you have to make sure that you do know the type of data that you're dealing with that's important uh, in any type of application, but especially if you're working on sorting, knowing your data set is very important. So please let me know if you have any questions at all about insertion sort, and I'll see you in the next video.